What is going on, everybody? Clearly, we're not running yet. The starter's been rebuilt. It's cranking good. Confident in that. The fuel system is good. Fuel pump is working good. Carburetor's working good. Confident in that. So then it's down to, of course, you always hear fuel, air, spark. But I took all of the intake runners off. Look down in the cylinders. A little bit disturbing on what I did see, but I think it cleaned up okay. So the intake is clear. It's getting air. It's getting fuel. I pulled the spark plugs out prior, and it was getting spark. The question I have is, is it enough spark? So I pulled all three of these, had them kind of sitting on the block, and but I'm getting spark. Same thing on the other side. It was alternating, tick, 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 like you would expect it should. So put that all back together. Crank, crank, crank forever, nothing. Not even signs of life like we might have seen on the previous video. That led me into researching magnetos and the firing order. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of information regarding uh, magnetos. I believe it's because, um, you know, when you own an airplane, you're not supposed to, to work on those unless you're FAA certified or whatever it is. Um, so, um, you know, I, I still thought that somebody with an airboat or something like that or generator would have some sort of video. So there's a little bit out there, but not much. So that led me to post on a forum. There was a suggestion on there to check the points. So that led me to pull Magneto off or actually pull the cover off. If you don't know what the inside of a Magneto looks like, well, first off here, this is a uh, Bendix 23 series, but this is the in inside of a Magneto. This is some sort of crank that the motor turns and turns this that generates just like a small little motor. Once this turns, generates spark, and clearly I'm not an expert here. So I pulled, pulled the cap off. I'll show you that here in a minute um, just to kind of get into this. This, although it's a little dirty, looks to be good. I mean, I don't see any broken teeth here. Um, I haven't cranked it or, or whatever, so I'll uh, hand crank it and see to make sure this is all in good condition. But generally speaking, this is in good condition. So here's the one thing I didn't do is there's a timing consideration. Obviously, when the cylinder one is in top dead position, this needs to be in a certain position. So, of course, what I didn't do, and I don't know that it matters yet, but... I didn't put it in number one top dead center before I pulled all this apart. Just got into it, but that may haunt me later. Let's go over to the bench and I'll show you the rest of it. So first off, I'll show you the cap. I'll show you the cap and what it looked like, the cap and wires. So this is the the rest of the magneto that the, the front part of what we we're just looking at a few minutes ago and you can see these are one of these for each cylinder i believe the firing order this is number one it fires this way this is a counterclockwise unit it's counterclockwise from the back when you're looking at it from the back it's fairly simple there's a little motor in there it creates a spark the spark basically sends to each cylinder and fires the cylinder um, there's a capacitor here that holds charge, and I believe this is a coil. This is a serviceable part as well. I believe this just kind of pops out, but I don't want to get into it and tear this thing apart. I don't know. I didn't want to, because this is very expensive. This shop chicken in effect. Um, there's a coil here, charges this capacitor, and then there's points down in here. So anyways, the recommendation was to clean out these points. I had a bear of a time getting out one of the one of the screws here. Even worse, one of the screws here. Um, you can even see here. I just had a combination of heat, some of this, and I took my time, some of that on there, let it sit, tried it sprayed some lawn, you know, so every couple hours it come out, just put a little squirt on there. I believe that helped. So good news is I got it out. I didn't have any more broken bolts. 
because that's been haunting me so far this project a again you understand i believe by now my hesitancy to put any money in any more money into this um, i believe i'm about 500 ish into it already i've um, got some good parts but 500 into it already but it probably would make sense to replace these two items there is a way to test i don't understand how to test them yet um but what I'm going to probably do, since this is easily serviceable without taking all this off, is I will clean some of this up a little bit. I will clean up, use some sandpaper, clean up the, the, the points. I believe, if I can get it in there. You see, right there, those are the, those are the points. There's a rotor and it rotates around and right when it needs to fire X and fires one of these cylinders. So I am going to rotate it to where it, sh it should be gapped. I'll do that before I replace anything. We'll put it all back. We'll make sure it's timed, which I don't know how to do that yet. And sorry for the long drawn out process with no starting yet, but that's where I'm at. And even though it's taking a while, I definitely wanted to record my work so I can look back on some of this when I'm finished. But I wanted to show you guys, in case you haven't torn yours apart, in case you get one, you can look into... What, what I like about YouTube is you can actually look into things before you even get into the project. So now you know what they look like. You can know what to look for um, and go from there. So it did look, relatively speaking, dry inside. It was not rusty. It's a little bit crusty in there, but... Um, I believe this to be functioning okay. However, I don't know if it's getting good contact on the points and also the capacitor is good. Both of those things could be causing intermittent or weak spark. So I cleaned up the, here we go. So I cleaned up the points. You can see this point uh, right there and that point right there. Those are the two that make contact. They were pretty gunky. So I'm sure it wasn't helping. Um, now, if you look at this part, I don't know if you can see, look on the this part up here. Oh, I'm sure this will work. There you go, maybe. Here you go. So I'm sure this will work. However, if I get it to where it's running, this probably all should be replaced. But I've also kind of cleaned up this. There was a little bit of rust on the bottom. Um, looks like it's a pretty decent cleanup. There's a little bit of gunk there, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe this needs to be grounded to the case, have a good ground. So maybe I'll hit that with sandblaster a little bit. The next step would be spark plug wires. So if we get to where this is running again, absolutely a must would be replacing the spark plug wires. So that'll be the next step. All right, so I read a lot of information and watched a lot of videos on the timing, the internal timing of this 20 series Magneto. And most of it made sense, but it wasn't exactly clear to me of how it all aligned. Here's the basics of it. There's a chamfered tooth, a notched tooth on this gear, on the shaft here. That one, I put a little white mark on it so I can see it. When that gear is aligned with the gear with the dots on the bottom, not the top with the red mark, but the dots on the bottom, that means that this mark will show up in your timing window and also means that this mark puts this tang right at cylinder number one. So. It made sense to me how to internally time it, but I didn't really know exactly what that meant, although I'm a little slow sometimes. So I'm gonna get this exactly at cylinder one ready to fire. The motor is at top dead center minus, backed up 30 degrees. I should be able to pop this in there with it timed and we should be good to go but it's literally got to go in exactly like that. There's some other timing considerations that you can use a buzz box and things like that, but I don't have one. I got to get it just in the ballpark just to see if this damn thing runs. So yeah, chamfer tooth goes into the 
There's a couple different marks. The normal one you see there, I painted in white. So that spline has to go in between there, those two white marks. When you do that, that puts this right on cylinder, num cylinder number one. Pretty straightforward. When you do that, it should also, these marks should show up in the timing window here. One of the things I did is I had this in the right area, but it wasn't on the right tooth, or I had it all aligned properly, but it was not a top dead center. So I had a couple different interplay effects going on, but I think I've got it right now. We'll see. Just in case you want to see what it looks like inside where the magneto goes. There's a gear that I popped right off of there. That's where it times into the engine. Overall, it doesn't look too bad in there. There's some corrosion and stuff, but it's just kind of the same stuff we had in those cylinders. Here's the uh, back end of the magneto. So that slips into that, and that slips on the shaft that we just looked at. So uh, this had a little bit of surface rust on this surface right here. So clean it up, greased it, clean the entire thing, greased it, and we'll put it back in.